Who was Santiago Duran, and what secret did he tell you? JJ's father was, uh, at some point, he was a policeman. At some point, when he was a teenager, he was working on the boats that, before this little gold mining city of Puerto Maldonado uh, grew, the only way to get supplies in was to take canoes up the Tambopata River up to the next state, which is Puno, and and where the mules would come down from the mountains with supplies, and then he'd pilot the boats down, but they didn't have motors at that time, so he would be pulling the boat. So he was he became this physically terrifying man. And I met him in it when he was in his 80s, and he was still living out in the jungle by himself. And I mean, he's seen an anaconda eat a taper, which is the you know a cow-sized mammal in the Amazon. He'd seen uncontacted tribes face to face. He once killed an 11 foot electric eel, opened the back of the thing's neck, removed the nerve that he says was the source of the electric. Then he cut his forearm, placed that nerve into his forearm, wrapped it with a dead toad and claimed that it would give him strength through the rest of his life and continued to be a jungle badass until the day he quietly leaned back at a barbecue and ceased to be alive. The man was incredible. But the secret that he told us was that if you want to find big anacondas, you know, if you want to see the Yakumama, he was like, you have to go to the Boayo, the place of boas, the, the place that we came to call the floating forest. And so he sent us there and it became like this this pilgrimage and you know in the amazon the a lot of the creation myths are based around the anaconda coming down from the heavens and carving the rivers across the jungle and if you look at the rivers it looks like that it looks like the path of an anaconda crawling through the jungle it's even the right color and so from the reference to the tribes of women the amazons to the anaconda mother everything in the amazon is very feminine based even the even the trees, the largest trees in the jungle, the mother of the forest, the Madre de la Selva is the Kapok tree. And it's just this monster tree, these beautiful ancient trees. And that was the beginning of the transition that we made from me being like, I hate school. I want to go on adventures. You know, Jane Goodall got to do all this amazing stuff. I'm just a kid stuck here to, to, eventually becoming something that had to do with where my identity became the jungle, where my life became the jungle. The the secret that he told us opened that door because when we started working with these giant snakes, it started getting attention. It started getting people to go, what are you doing? Um, and it started it started allowing me to have experiences that that solidified and nailed down the fact that this wasn't just like a, a weekend retreat. This was this was something that that I was born to do, and gave you more and more motivation to go in, into these uncharted territory um, of the Yak Yakumama. Yakumama. Which, uh, just to step back, what nations are we talking about here? Is there some some geography? What are we talking about? Where is this? So I'm in Peru. Yeah, we're in Peru, and so Peru, which is a South American nation. Peru is a South American nation. Brazil has 60% of the Amazon, which is unfortunate because anything that happens politically in Brazil has a massive infect, uh, impact on the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Peru has the Western Amazon and Ecuador has a little bit of the Western Amazon. And the Western Amazon is where the Andes Mountains, the cloud forests, which is a mega biodiverse biome, falls into the Western Amazon lowlands. And so you have these the meeting of these two incredible biomes. And that's what makes this like superlative, incredible, you know, glowing moment of life on Earth. So yeah, we're in Peru in the Madre de Dios, which is the mother of God, which I always thought was such a beautiful, you know, the jungle is the source of all life. And uh, so we were with the Saeha people and they belong to a community that's called Infierno, which was given by the missionaries who, when they tried to go bring these people Jesus, got so many arrows shot at them that they just called it hell. Um, and so, so Santiago Duran helped unite these tribes that were, that were sort of scattered through the jungle and get them status, government recognized status as indigenous people. So he was sort of a hero. He was sort of a legend for a lot of the stuff he'd done out barefoot with just like a rifle and a machete in the jungle. He, he had died, the, he had 19 children. Mm -hmm. And the last one, the, the, I think the 20th child that he adopted was a refugee from the shining path that floated down the river and he just took him in. And, you know, this is, this is just a guy that was a, you know, everything he did, like when he died, the whole, the whole, the whole region showed up. It was, 
it was he was somebody so just the fact that i know him gives me street credit like the <laughs> fact that i knew him i can go like oh i knew santiago and people are like no mm -hmm. i'm like yeah yeah so you have to get integrated to the culture to the place that me in every single way which is which is tough for you for the being from from new york yeah yeah, may, it could have been tough, but it, it was, I took to it, you know, the jungle, they, they were very, uh, you know, JJ's teaching me about medicines and we were doing bird surveys and, you know, taking data on macaw populations. And JJ was just like, you really want to like, he goes, you got to sleep. And I was like, I only have a few weeks here. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to come back. I'm never going to sleep. So we'd be out every night looking for all the wildlife we could. I wanted to take photos. I wanted to see things. And, and then you know, the, the exchange came with that. He was like, you know, I'm terrified of snakes. And I said, well, I've always worked with snakes. I said, I'll teach you how to handle snakes. And then we just had this like little exchange. And when I left after my first time back in 2006, I, you know, I said, I said, how can I help? And, and they were like, look, you know, we're out here trying to protect this, this little island of forest that is going to be bulldozed. And, and the more people that you can bring, the more knowledge and the more awareness that you can bring to this, it'll help. And so really at that age, at 18 years old, I sort of started dabbling with the idea of that I could be part of helping these people to protect this place that I loved. And of course, at that time, that idea seemed like too large of a dream or too large of a, of a, of a challenge to that I could actually impact it.